you know, the church being here and Red Tent and um, an engineering goes city council and I'm looking out towards services for the last few months. But before that, I spent 10 years working on capital projects and water conservation was a major one. So I'm delighted to tell you a little bit about what we do and what we don't do regarding water conservation in Gold City Council. Okay, so just the contents, I'm going to give you a very quick background onto the Gold City Water Supply System and the challenges that are facing water conservation kind of nationally. The leakage reduction activities, these are the standard activities that would be best practice for water conservation. Then what we kind of do in Gold City Council and what we've done to date. Then I'm trying to kind of link the whole water economics in with what we do in Gold City Council and how we can kind of make input or help with the project. Uh, a little bit on customer engagement, which is very important and something we have to be great on in, in, in council. Then I was, I've dropped in these few slides on the European Green Leaf because my colleague couldn't be here, but I think it's very appropriate and it fits in with everything that we're doing today. And also the Slow the Flow campaign, which is an awareness campaign, which will kind of kickstart again as a result of the Green Leaf. And then just a quick one on the benefits of water conservation. So. So just the Bowie City Water Supply is, is served via Terrelon Water Treatment Plant, which you probably know, um, and we also get some treated imported water from the county. And um, we currently supply 43,000 litres cubed of water per day to four number zones. The city is divided into zones as Tonnebrook, Clifton Hill, Coolock, and Briar Hill, pretty much east and west. The distribution network consists of 460 kilometres of pipe work, and since you probably know January 1st, Irish Water has now become the National Water Service Authority, and we work with them in partnership and um, under the terms of the service level agreements to provide water services basically for the city. So this is kind of just the challenges on a national a national level. So uh, we all know about the leakage in the UFW and it's very much out there. And obviously with that high level, it's up around 50%. It, it leaves basically very little spur capacity. Now this would be in nationally some treatment plants would have very little spur capacity. In Terryland, we're not too bad. And um, we have a bit of spur capacity and a headroom. But obviously it all leads to higher operating costs. And the DMA, the DMAs and a lot of local authorities can say this is more the national look, would we'll, we'll only be operating at about 50%, which is very poor. We're actually up at 80%, which is good, 90% actually, which is good. But obviously with poor operability of the DMAs, we have a lack of accurate data, which basically leakage estimates are all over the place. We have no pressure problems around the, around the, the country, this is more I'm talking about which leads to unplanned interruptions and basically very poor and inconsistent uh, customer services. So there are issues out there, but I think we're, we're working on them. That's nationally. So these are the main activities that we would use in the industry to tackle water conservation from an infrastructural point of view. So they can really be grouped into stages. The first two would be your water management system and your district metering program. So that would be DMAs. I've got a couple of slides later to show you about DMAs, in case you don't know, probably you do know. Um, after you set up all the systems, you then work on your active leakage control, which is finding and fixing the leaks. Um, pressure management is very important, obviously, because we, we can control the pressure, we can reduce the amount of water being wasted, and obviously we have low pressure problems as well, we have to try to get water to people. Um, then after that, you have main placement, which is the last step. When all of those are really exhausted, you, you can move to main placement. And then in the background is this one, which is very important, and I think we haven't concentrated on as much in, in, the, council, in the council. It's the customer advice and the information, and basically demand management to get people to use less. So it helps everybody. So just on our activities, like this is new. We've been working on it for 15 years or so. Um, we have installed our DNAs and we're developing um, leakage detection and repair capabilities. And obviously then we, we prioritize and we replace the, the oldest and currently performing water mains. So I'm going to go into that in a little bit of detail. So the DNAs were done back in about 08 or 09, and before that we didn't have any, any DNAs, so you really, you really it's just need in a haystack trying to find leaks. So we now established 82 DNAs, and that was with the installation of 300 fuels by us and 76 flow meters. And they're working very well, as I say, it's up to 90%. So we've also installed a telemetry logging system and a water management system. And they relay the data they get back from the flow meters in the DMAs back to the water conservation team, which can then analyze it and, and, and work on the leak detection. We've also got a hydraulic model for the city, we've got a geographical information system, um, which includes all the asset data. So we've got a very comprehensive map and um, management system for the city up and running at the moment. 
So this is just, I think, a nice picture of a DMA, a DMA with district media area. So right on top of the city as a whole, you divide into discrete packages of the distribution network, which can be isolated by boundary valves and closed off. So it makes leak detection far more um, effective. And instead of before the DMAs, really all we have is passive leak detect detection, which is like firefighting. We're just going out and fixing fixes, as, uh, fixing leaks as people, as people call them in. But now we directly target them. It's active leak control, so we try to find them before they even raise the surface. So it's very effective and, and it's working very well. Um, so once you get the, the information from all the flow, flow and pressure loggers and the DMA, you can then, as I say, prioritize the areas for active leak control. And we have a dedicated leak detection crew and repair crew, and that's what they do all day, is go around and try to detect the, 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 the leaks in the DMAs and then the crew go out and fix it, which is essential, essential for, um, for, for water conservation and maintaining your, your, your UFW. But obviously, there's only so much fine fixing you can do, and after you fix them eh, the same leak three or four times in a month, you realize that something has to be done. It's not economical to keep fine fixing. So we prioritize um, maze for rehabilitation. We prioritize on things like first history, age, um, critical head loss, performance, all those kind of things. And at the moment, we have a project which is funded by Irish Water, um, and it's going to rehabilitate about 20 kilometers of prioritized four mains. It's all around the city. Um, and it's, it, it, as I say, it's funded by Irish Water and it's going to get a cost of approximately 7.2 million. So it's a big scheme for us. And it's our first rehab project in about 10, 15 years, I think. So um, presently, we are we are very advanced. It's going to be a signed deal contract and we're finalizing the contract documents any day now. It will go to an um, Irish Water procurement framework, which means a very efficient way of, of getting a contract from board. It'll be a DB contract, it be a big project. It's due to commence in August, and the expected completion date is February 2019. So it's a, it's a very big project for the city. And just what we expect to get out of it, all going well. Um, we hope to reduce the existing level of the unaccounted for water, which is currently 53, which is very high, down to 49, which might seem very low reduction. But if you try to equate that, it actually works out as a possible saving of 1 million per year in operating costs. So you can see after seven or eight years, it will have paid for itself, and then you have a year on year of saving. Just on the UFW as well, it's, it's not a very good metric for measuring leakage. In fact, it's very poor because it, it, it includes private side leakage for one thing, which is not the responsibility of the local authority or Irish water. It includes unmetered connections, uncharged connections, illegal connections. So there's water included in that figure that actually isn't unaccounted for. It's just we don't know about it. So it's not a really very good metric. But it's out there and it's been used. And um, obviously we'll improve the hydraulic capacity and performance of the distribution network. We will have spur more spur capacity and ultimately I suppose we'll improve the security of our supply. So hopefully it will go well, I'll let you know. So the one thing about water conservation in the past is it's been treated as a project and to really find a way to do it because it can't really ever be a project because it has to be continuing. And it used to get funded and then when it's finished, it would, it, you know, resources would be taken away and your leave could go up and your crews would stop fixing and it just was a kind of a very bad way of doing it. So it has to be kind of, it must be a consistent part of your water operations. We have to continually maintain our DMAs, keep our loggers, keep our boundary valves, keep everything working nice and tight so that we can continually find and then obviously fix the leaks and then we have to prioritize the, the, the water main and use rehabilitation. So it's kind of a circle that's constantly going and a huge part of water um, operations on a day-to-day -day basis. So then I was trying to kind of see what's the connection with what we're doing and what the Water Maps uh, project is doing. So I love the, I love the name, and um, it's obviously a blend word of between water and economics. And if you look, if you look at the economics, it's a branch of knowledge concerned with the reduction in production, consumption, and transfer of money. So obviously it's the same with water, and I think it's a great brand. And we basically have the exact same goal because that's what we're, what we're trying to do. So there's definitely a connection there. And, and we, as a local authority, have left this bit of um, making people aware of, of their consumption and um, possibly because we, we lost resources during the 2007-2008 we did have a water conservation officer but we lost it so we didn't concentrate on, on trying to get people to use less water and very much it goes with what we're doing on the infrastructural side so i think we're going to try to use this now as well to kickstart our and making people aware of preserving this, this resource um, and to do this i think they need to know what they're using first which a lot of the, 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 the water maps and um, systems can do and um, so once they know if they're using they become more aware and hopefully they'll use less and I think what is, is, is a platform for doing this um, and really raising a 
awareness among consumers. It's actually recognized as a form of water conservation. It's essential to demand management. And in other countries, they prefer to kind of put their money into that end of it rather than the large end in the infrastructure end of it, as you can see on the rehabilitating. It can even have huge returns um, for a small amount of investment on actually getting people to use less water. So uh, I, that's where I hope to kind of try to, to move a little bit more in, in the City Council. So I'm trying to see how we can help with the water economics. So I think we can assist with collection of water data. We have huge databases and a lot of data out there. We can identify usage cases as well as possible pilot cases. We would, we would know about non-domestic um, consumers, the big consumers. We could possibly suggest people who might be interested in, in your platform and in your, your IT developments. We can help engage with stakeholders. We do that all the time. Um, we can obviously promote the use of the apps, the dashboard, thought detection and diagnosis as well. It's very interesting. Um, and basically promote water economics in our know, domestic customer engagement campaigns, which we're now going to advance. So on that domestic customer engagement, and um, obviously with Irish Water now, they're very much involved in, and they will finance everything. I've been working very well with them. But they have they actually have great customer engagement on their website, but um, it's not really it's not really advertised for certain reasons. But I'm hoping to kind of change that this year. And um, they have a big water smart, which is basically top tips on real hard on how to save water and it's extremely good. The thing before you flush campaign is a campaign between Irish Water and Natoshka and the local authorities are involved, where it's trying to make people aware of, I suppose, the sanitary products that end up on our beaches, like around Galway, we're all cloudy beaches. A lot of them are, are, you know, they're not very attractive. So we're trying to promote better bathroom behavior to, to get people to stop and to think. And so we're working with Irish Water and Natasha on that. The Green Schools Partnership, basically, it encourages schools, basically, to, to use less water, to, be, uh, to encourage awareness, and to kind of get the community involved. And it's a great competition and, and it's run, it, run year by year. They've got a report of leak, you can go online and you can actually report a leak, which obviously helps the detection. This one, Cloud to Glass, it's a little, a little kind of interactive um, diagram and then a video on how the water gets from the cloud to the tap, which I think is great for schools because I don't think people realise it's a seven-stage process and it takes three to four days to get from the cloud to the tap. It's really, really good if you want to go onto the website, it's so simple and it's so effective. The same for the drain to see, it's a similar one which basically goes from when you flush the toilet to how the water gets treated. They're excellent um, and we're working on uh, with, with the Irish water to try to promote these. The slow the flow is an Irish water um, and we'll talk about that later. It's a, big, it's a campaign um, and, and I have a few slides which I don't want to talk about. I'll just move on to them. I just was trying to see where to start today with the European Green Leaf and um, it's a European Commission competition. It's new enough, it's similar to the Green Capital, but it's for smaller cities between 20,000 and 100,000 inhabitants, and basically recognises the commitment to, to environmental outcomes. And Galway entered it, Galway City entered it last year, and they won. And they're the first Irish city to be awarded this designation, so we recognised for our commitment to the environment. So it's a really great time that this, this is working you know, together. Um, The objectives are threefold, it's basically to promote an, an education and awareness, to get public participation and citizen engagement, which is really what we're trying, we're all trying to do with them, is to get people to, to kind of to use less and to be more environmentally friendly and to think about sustainability, and also to act as a green ambassador so that we can try to encourage other, other cities um, to, to um, <coughs> be sustainable, so you kind of spread it, you know, you, just, you, just keep, you, know, you take your good practices and you spread that. I think it's local authority and, and using the local authority form, we should be able to do that. And um, the, the themes are kind of the normal ones you'd expect climate change and energy performance, mobility, biodiversity, air quality. So obviously we come in here underwater and wastewater management. And um, it's going to be launched in March um, and it's basically based on projects and events. And there's going to be a calendar and a program of projects and events and launched as well in March. And um, what I'm hoping to do is to to have an event in May in conjunction with Irish Water and I'm going to showcase all those campaigns that I was just talking about, the Irish Water ones and the Slow the Flow one, which I'm going to talk about soon. But I've also invited the leads as well to come on to this event and try to maybe plan to showcase the water lamps because that's what the, the Green League is about. It's trying to kind of give international publicity to local initiatives um, and I think the water lamps is definitely one of those. It's, it's an environmental initiative and about sustainability and the local. So this is a great platform to do to uh, on the back of the baby. Um, and I think if it, I have only organised the event but it will take place in the time of May and it will be obviously advertised when we still when we, when we finish just organising it. So just on this local flow, this was our campaign and it was a very good campaign back in 2007 
and it was launched and it was it was basically brought to all the schools. It was a booklet at the time. So it was basically concerned of juice and day use of treated water at home, at work, at school, it's kind of divided into those areas um, and, and to basically just get people to stop overusing and, and to try to also put the focus back on the people and, and just and just you probably all know the low statistics on how much water we use, but 150 litres which is quite served per day and only three percent is consumed as drinking water. So you see there's a huge scope there for saving water. The, the, the biggest the, the worst Wastage of waters in the kitchen and in the bathroom. And this book gives you so many tips and there's loads of out there on how to how to save water. And, and it's basically it's down to the to, to, to kind of culture change and get people to, to become part of their the routine of their daily life. And so we're we now have we're converting this into an e-booklet and we're going to promote this with Irish Water and all of their campaigns, which they haven't really promoted to date. So we're kind of going to use it on the back of the local authority through this event, through the Green Leaf, and bring it all together to really try to, to kickstart the awareness and that whole side of the water conservation and, and not just the website. So it's still work in progress, but I think this is the, it's something I've been wanting to do for the last 10 years, but now the Green Leaf, um, I think it's a great time to do it, so. Um, the benefits of water conservation, you know, it saves money, it protects our water resources, which we can save in the country, but I think it's very vulnerable. It minimizes pollution and health risks, for costly water, yeah, I mean, we can defer capital investment into, into water conservation and infrastructure and defer the capital into treatment facilities. We're saving money all the time. It's, it maintains the health of the aquatic environment. Um, obviously, the energy savings are huge as well, which I think that the, the water economics is really trying to hone in. It's not just your, your um, carbon footprint, it's also your know, water footprint. They go together. We have to heat water. We have to do all of that. So there's a huge link there with, with, um, and, uh, the energy savings. Um, and then obviously more, the less water that people use, the less they have to treat in our, in our treatment plants. So it's you know it, it's a it's a win-win situation if we can get people to use less. And just uh, this is kind of Irish water. I was to give you an idea on, on a national scale again, back to national. Like they have done phenomenal, phenomenal work, and um, just loads get publicised and kind of all that stuff. But they've we replaced 840 kilometres of water lanes. I think there's another 10,000 kilometres for the next three or four years. Planned. They're saving 70 million litres um, per day. And um, the DNA applicability has gone up, this is nationally average, has gone up from 50% to 77. And like anything around 80 would be particularly good, uh, so it's like 90. Um, they've approved the leakage and asset data, it's kind of more national now, and standardised. Eventually, all of our DMA information will go back to a system in Dublin, and they will control nearly all the DMAs, and it will be done at a national kind of standardised approach, which, which is great. Um, and obviously this all helps to kind of give a more positive customer experience. So I hope I haven't bored you all to, to tears, but um, if you don't remember anything, I suppose that these are the things I'd like to try to remember. And uh, uh, water conservation infrastructure, which is what we're doing with our weed hands and our final fixing, it's really doing that conservation. It's that weight demand management and awareness and the campaigns and asking people to turn off taps and use less. It's the two of them together really will bring about a sustainable use on, on water. Um, and this will take a lot of commitment and participation of all the community. Um, I think the slow the flow, we're aiming at the kids, because we get the kids in early, they're the ones that will, you know, I think we found that the value is isn't great from adults and stuff, and they're not as interested, you know, but if you get kids in the school and get them into water conservation awareness, they will, that will, it's a cultural change and it will bring them to their daily life. I suppose every drop counts, every contribution matters, no matter how big or small. So we all need to make water conservation of life. Thank you. Thank you.